Good afternoon, everyone. We're going to go ahead and get started. It's great to see everybody. I feel like it's been a minute since we've all gathered, so thank you all for, for coming today. Appreciate it. Uh, welcome to the Wasser Chamber's 2023 State of Education Luncheon. My name is Michael Amberg, and I'm the My name is Michael Amberg, and I am the 2023 Chair of the Owasso Chamber of Commerce and Economic Development. Uh, to begin today's program, would you please stand and welcome Nathan Purifoy, Development Specialist for the Baptist Village Communities and Owasso Chamber Ambassador, as he leads us in our invocation and pledge, and remain standing as we proceed with our Pledge of Allegiance. Let's pray. Dear Lord, we thank you for today, and uh, thank you for all these great people here. And uh, Lord, we just want to recognize that we need you in our society, in our schools, in our daily lives. Lord, every good and perfect gift comes down from the Father above, like your word says. So, God, I pray that you would show us today uh, maybe something particular we need to do to help to support these great schools that we have here. And uh, I just pray also for the school year, for the administrators, the uh, students, the teachers, the coaches, uh, people that pour their lives into this. Uh, we pray that you would bless them, give them the energy they need, the encouragement, the love, and uh, I ask you to bless this year. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. All right, please remain standing, salute, and pledge. <laughs> And thank you so much to Tulsa Tech. Uh, we 
we love being able to have these events here. Their staff here is so supportive. We love the, the catering staff, the event staff, and Dr. Clark, uh, Tony, thank you very much for everything that we uh, are able to experience in this room to be able to put on these events. And uh, last but not least, I would like to, to thank my staff uh, at the Owasso Chamber for uh, making these events as wonderful as they are. If you wouldn't mind uh, please giving our staff a, round, a warm round of applause. <laughs> and before I, oh, hang on, I'm gonna do this. There we go, okay. Before I uh, introduce Dr. Clark up here to introduce our featured speaker, I just, I just have to say thank you to all Owasso voters that approved the proposition on the ballot yesterday. So let's give a huge round of applause for approving the 5500 sales tax for improvements in our community. It is, it is because of our city that we have incredible infrastructure and a great community. We need to continue to support our community city, the schools, our businesses, your chamber, because we are all working together to make Owasso the community that you all want it to be, to make it a great place to live, to work, to play. I know that sounds cliche, but isn't it the truth? So thank you all so much. Now, I would like to introduce Dr. Clark, the chair-elect for the Owasso Chamber of Commerce and the campus director for Tulsa Tech here in Owasso to introduce our featured speaker today. Thank you, Chelsea. It is my honor to introduce to you today Dr. Margaret Coates, who officially became superintendent of Owasso Public Schools on July 1st, 2022. After spending nearly 15 years in the district as a teacher, a coach, and an administrator, she oversees all operations in the district, which includes about 9,800 students and 1,200 staff members. Dr. Coates served as the district's interim superintendent during the spring semester of the 2021-22 school year, following a four-year tenure as the assistant superintendent for teaching and learning. Since stepping into the superintendent's role, she has overseen the passage of the district's largest school bond package, uh, which was $83.9 million over five years. She led a comprehensive review and update of employee salaries and initiated the creation of a five-year strategic plan. Dr. Coates began her career in education as a geometry teacher at Owasso High School, West Campus, which for some of us was the former mid-high. In, in 2002, before earning the role of assistant principal in the building from 2007 to 2012. During her time at Owasso High School, she served as the math department chair and was instrumental in the creation of the Owasso Virtual High School. Along with her duties in the classroom, she coached girls basketball, cross country, and track and field. Following her time at Owasso High School, she transitioned to the role of Centennial Middle School principal, opened the freshman academy, and then served as assistant superintendent of secondary education for Broken Arrow Public Schools from 2012 to 2018. Dr. Coates then returned to Owasso as the Assistant Superintendent for Teaching and Learning in 2018. A native of Collinsville, Dr. Coates earned her doctorate in Educational Leadership and School Administration from Oklahoma State University in 2017. She previously graduated from the University of Tulsa with a Master's Degree in Athletic Administration in 1990 and a Bachelor's Degree in Health, Physical Education and Recreation in 1988. In addition to her studies, Dr. Coates was a two-year letter winner on the TU Women's Basketball Team and was an academic All-American in 1987. An avid outdoor enthusiast, Dr. Coates has hiked the Pacific Coast Trail from Mexico to Canada. She has run more than 20 marathons and completed the Ironman Tulsa Triathlon in 2022 and most recently this year in 2020. Please help me welcome my friend and superintendent of Owasso Public Schools, Dr. Margaret Coates. All right, thank you, Dr. Clark. Um, Le uh, Leslie and I actually went to high school together and played basketball together um, in 
Collinsville, so we go way, way back. Can you guys hear me okay? I'm going to have to pull this microphone closer. Um, before I get started with this presentation, I do want to um, recognize our board members again. So board members, if you would, please stand up. I want to um, single you out. So Brent England, he is our board president right now, and he has been serving in Owasso since 2004, so nearly 20 years. So thank you for your service. Um, Stephanie Rutman. She's been serving since 2021. She's the newbie on the squad. She's been here, until she'll start her third year. We are grateful for her service as well. She's board clerk this year. And Rhonda Mills is deputy clerk. She's been on the board since 2012, to almost 12 years uh, of service, so thank you. And Mr. Neil Kessler on the board since 2018. Let's give them another round of applause, please. Their leadership, dedication, and desire to always do what's best for students is evident in everything they do. I'm truly honored and humbled to serve alongside them, and I am grateful for their support in the district. Uh, now for the Owasso team. Would you guys all please stand up? This is the Owasso team. I'm not going to um, ask, uh, recognize them individually, but let's give them a round of applause. This is our district leadership team. Thank you for being here. gave you a little bit of background about myself, but I'm going to share a few things with you um, that, uh, just a little bit more that you might find a little bit interesting. I am a product of the American dream and public schools. I am a fourth generation Italian American. My grand great grandparents, Giuseppe and Annunzia Spazzato, my name, maiden name was Spazzato, immigrated to the United States from a small town called Acre, from Calabria, Italy. They landed in Ellis Island in 1903, settled in Huntington Station, Long Island, where they raised 14 kids. My grandfather was the second son. Let's see, there he is. And he's the one right here with the eyebrows that look like caterpillars. <laughs> And he has pre he prematurely grayed, and I, I can see why with 12 kids. Uh, my dad, uh, my grandfather, was born and raised, like I said, in New York. His name is Vincent James Pizzotto. He was born in 1915. He grew up fighting on the streets of New York. He got so good at it that he eventually became the 1932 New York Golden Gloves lightweight champion and was also the New York State Champion. In 1938, he moved to Tulsa, where he met my grandmother, Elizabeth Salzbach, Betty, um, at St. John Hospital. They later married, two years later, and then they went back to Brooklyn, New York for a time where my dad was born. This is my dad right here. My dad is also, he was the second son, just like my grandfather, and his name is Vincent James Spizzato Jr. And uh, when they came back to Oklahoma in 1946, my grandmother and grandfather raised 12 kids, seven girls, five boys in Tulsa. They have over 100 grandchildren and great-grandchildren. So just imagine the family reunions and uh, Thanksgiving. It was a wild time in the Spizzato household. My dad met my mom in Miami, Oklahoma. He had a football scholarship at the uh, NEO. My mom was a cheerleader. They met, married, and uh, we lived in Tulsa for a time. This is my family. That's my mom and dad. This is me when I was 12 or 13. I'm the oldest of six kids. We are standing in chronological age order there, all the way down to my little sister, Jennifer. My mom had all six of us by the time she was 30. My mom served as, a, worked as a neonatal intensive care nurse at St. John Hospital. My dad was a teacher and coach and worked, uh, coached all around, but we settled in Collinsville and I, that's where I graduated from high school. 
I loved my time at Collinsville High School. I loved my time uh, as an athlete, was involved in everything, um, all sports, all activities, the school play, Spanish club, I mean, everything. And that was one of the great things about going to a small school and a public school. I later then went to the University of Tulsa, got my bachelor's and master's degree there, and as Dr. Clark mentioned, went to OSU and earned my doctorate. I'm currently married to my husband, Patrick, who is a commercial real estate broker, and he's been a broker in Tulsa for 30 years. I have two sons and two stepsons, Eric and Casey, were raised here in Owasso and graduates of Owasso High School. That's my son, Casey, who is a graduate in 2014. That's my dad. That's my nana. That's uh, Betty Spizzato. And my brother, who was the second son, is Vincent James Spizzato III. And that is his wife, Lorena. And they had twins recently. And the second twin is named Vincent James Spizzato IV. Well, I don't know how long they're going to keep this going, but it, it's four generations of Vincent James Spizzatos. And we have, uh, Patrick and I together have five grandkids who love to come over to Nona, that's me, and g -Paw's house and play on our giant swing set fort. So it's a, it's a wild time when they all come over. I love it. And anyone who knows me knows that I love a physical challenge and uh, I love to play tennis and sports and run and swim and bike and especially long distance backpacking. And this is a picture of my husband, Patrick, and I on our adventures, or my adventure on the Pacific Crest Trail. And I was able to drag him out there with me for a few days. He's really only good for about two days. He usually wants to call Uber and try to get, get a ride back into town after a, a bit. So um, Dr. Clark mentioned the Pacific Crest Trail. That's a 2,000 mile trail from Mexico to Canada. I hiked that trail in 2021. <coughs> and loved every single minute of it. It was the, it was the hardest thing I've ever done, the, the hardest challenge, and it was an adventure of a lifetime. This is a picture of Washington State as I was nearing the Canadian border. It is just beautiful, and it was just such a, such a neat time of my life. And now, I'm engaged in my next adventure and challenge as superintendent of Owasso Public Schools absolutely loving it. I'm passionate about public education because it provides equal opportunity for anyone and everyone to pursue the American dream. Now I'm going to provide you with an update on the state of education for Owasso Public Schools and I will start by telling you the state of education is very strong in Owasso. Here are some basic facts. Did you know that the first school in the area was a subscription school established in 1898 by Lula Barnes in a one-room building and had about 20 students it was called Elm Ridge and located in Elm Creek. It's hard to believe now that our school district encompasses 72 square miles with an enrollment of around 9,900. We're gonna, I think we might hit the 10,000 mark this year serving 15 school sites in grades pre-K through 12 with a 92.4% graduation rate with over 1,200 employees and 615 of those being certified staff. We are the largest employer in Owasso with an annual budget of $75 million. This budget allows us to have the best teacher compensation package in the area. As we look Toward the future of our district, we must also acknowledge the rich history and strong foundation that has brought us to where we are today. Owasso Public Schools has long been a standard of excellence in education, and our commitment to high expectations, love for our students, and preparing them for the challenges of the future has never wavered. Our mission to provide a safe environment that equips educates and empowers Owasso students on their journey toward outstanding character and success is our guiding principle for everything we do in Owasso Public Schools. Owasso is a city of character and our schools fully participate and incorporate the monthly character traits into our curriculum and programming. At our monthly board meetings, we have a student representative say the Pledge of Allegiance 
and talk about what the character trait for each month means to them and how they observe it in their schools. I noticed that this month's character trait is punctuality. We hope that that all works out for our students when they start next week, that they are punctual to class. Um, every year, we, our district leadership team, and all of our district administrators, that team is called Team First. We meet monthly, and we meet and, figure, and come up with a word for the year that's gonna help us focus and keep us focused on um, and just guide us through the year. That word this year, for this academic year, is intentional. It is a concept that lies at the heart of our educational mission. Intentionality serves as a powerful force that propels us toward meaningful, purposeful, and transformative experiences, both in the classroom and beyond. It encompasses our aim to empower our students, foster their growth, and ignite the spark of learning within them. Our fine arts department took over 300 students on a trip to Ireland last spring. The experience was definitely transformative for our students, staff, and parents. The fine arts department is one of the best in the state and the country because of their intentionality and purposeful dedication to ensuring our students receive the best instruction on a daily basis. This is our band director, Mr. Harris, with a group of band students on the Cliffs of Moor in Ireland. You can see how much fun they're having, even though the weather was a little rainy, but it rains on average 225 days a year in Ireland. So we were wearing our raincoats pretty much the whole time. With the idea of intentionality uh, propelling us toward, sorry, I gotta get my work in here, propelling us toward transformative experiences, I'm excited to announce our five year strategic plan. It is a product of many months of hard work between members of our Board of Education, teachers, students, administrators, staff, and the Owasso community. The process consisted of four phases, engage, plan, act, and achieve. Throughout the year, stakeholder teams met and collaborated during each phase, aiming to answer these questions. Who are we? Where are we now? Where do we want to go? How will we know when we get there? and how do we plan to get there? During phase one, as we administered surveys and conducted feedback forms, the root of what we were asking was this. What are your hopes and dreams for your child at Owasso Public Schools? The answer to that question resulted in a clear articulation of our core beliefs, values, and learner expectations which you will see on the next few slides. As I share these slides with you, keep in mind they are listed in order of priority and importance. Our core values ensure we will create a safe and healthy environment for teaching and learning, provides adequate financial support, and leverages school and community connections. We expect our graduates currently and in the future to possess these skills. With, ever, with the ever-evolving growth of technology in the workforce, like AI or ChatGPT, our challenge and the challenge for all educational institutions is to prepare students for jobs that don't currently exist. If our students master these skills and expectations, they will be successful in whatever they pursue after graduation. So if you were to narrow down these beliefs values and expectations into three words. Those three words are love, challenge, and prepare. We will love and accept all kids and provide a safe environment for learning. Get the clicker in the right spot. We will challenge kids to reach their full potential by maintaining high standards and expectations. And we will prepare kids to become productive citizens. After we determined our beliefs, values, and expectations, we entered phase two and three, where we created goal areas, objectives, and initiatives, which you can see here. We looked at data to determine what we're doing well and where we need to improve. What we discovered through this process is that we are doing a lot of things very, very well, and we will continue to stay committed to inv investing in those areas 
as well as launching new initiatives to strive for continued improvement. Some of the initiatives that we are working on are we will continue being a professional learning community, we'll continue our internship program with students, we will continue to focus on recruitment and retention of quality employees, we will launch our new before and after care program, we will increase security around our district, we will aim to add full day pre-K, we will in, uh, this year uh, be investigating and planning, doing some master planning, long range facility master planning. We will continue to strengthen student led clubs, leadership and character education and we will continue to develop our employees with quality professional development. This strategic plan sets the expectation that each student, regardless of ethnicity, language, ability, or income level, can achieve high standards. Strategies are included to ensure students will meet or exceed standards, graduate on time, and be college and career ready. We are committed to the implementation of the strategic plan as it provides a clear roadmap for our future. I'd like to highlight for you now some of the things within the strategic plan that we will focus on this school year. Under goal area one, RAM achievement, our objectives are to advance student academic performance and elevate college career and life readiness. The benefits we provide to our students in this area include Google Classroom as our learning management system, and every student in the district has, an ac has access to a device, a Chromebook. We are one-to-one, -one, pre-K through 12th grade. We have a required core curriculum in math, science, social studies, and English, and we have a wide variety of elective courses from foreign language, technology, health and fitness. We have a Native American studies class. We have STEM. We have VOAG. We have a class called Outdoor Education at our 8th grade center. We have a class called Books and their Films at the 7th grade center. We have eSports, Single Survival, and that's a fancy name for Home Ec, for some of us that took Home Ec. And we also offer Personal Financial Literacy and Robotics, and that's just to name a few, because we have over 150 electives in just 6th through 12th grade only. K, K through five, we offer PE, music, and computers to every single student. We have 30 fine arts courses. We have 27 advanced placement courses with currently one, over 1,000 uh, 1, enrollments in our AP courses. Our advanced coursework starts in sixth grade. And then we also offer dual credit courses with TCC and what that means is students can take a college class and get college credit and high school credit at the same time. We have, there are over 86 different courses that students are signed up for and right now we have over 500 enrollments in those dual credit courses. We also offer a partner with Tulsa Tech and we have around 245 students currently enrolled in 62 different Tulsa Tech programs. So really appreciate the Tulsa Tech partnership. And finally, we offer uh, internship programs and we have 157 students signed up for that this year. So you may be wondering now, how do we compare? How do we compare to other schools and to the state as a whole? I will tell you, we are doing exceptionally well. This graph shows a comparison of four data points. Academic achievement, six-year graduation rate, post-secondary opportunities, and third grade reading and math. We know there's so much more that determines a quality school district uh, than just these data points but I wanted to share these with you so that you can see, because these are the, the data points that are most commonly referred to, so I wanted to share these with you. This graph is a comparison of school districts in our metro area, as well as Mustang um, on the other side of the state, because Mustang is uh, almost our identical size and demographic. This data comes from our state report card for school year 21-22. We don't have the report card data yet from the State Department for 
last year. So let's start by looking at the blue bar. I'm gonna keep this like this. The blue bar represents academic achievement. And this is an indicator that uh, we use. It's based on state test scores in English, math, and science given at the end of the, each year to our third through eighth grade and 11th grade. This is a composite score. So this is all third grade through eighth grade and 11th grade, all together, math, English, science, the whole district, how you, how you compare. So this is uh, the results show, and you can't maybe, you, you maybe can't see very well on the graph, but we are ahead of our peers. We're doing better than our peers and exceed the state average by 20%. So academic achievement, we exceed the state average by 20%. The red bar is our six year graduation rate. And we use this indicator, because I know you're thinking, well don't you graduate in four years? But yes, we try to get everybody graduated in four years, but we use the six year graduation rate because there are some students who are unable to graduate in six years due to disabilities, and other factors. So we take in the six year graduation rate because that is our goal to get everybody through by that sixth year. All of the districts in this area are very close to the same rate with Owasso being close to 10% above the state average. And now for the yellow or gold bar, this is post-secondary opportunities. And this indicator um, is a composite score of the number uh, or percentage of students enrolled in a post-secondary course or earning credit. Those post-secondary courses are AP classes, your TCC classes, your dual credit, Tulsa Tech, and internships. So anything that's giving you credit for uh, life after high school. We, this is an area that we are focusing on in our strategic plan and we need to continue to focus on it. We know we can do better in this area. We are about 7% higher than the state average, but we, I'm a little bit competitive and I wanna, I wanna do even better than that. So we're gonna focus on that within this five year strategic plan. And finally, this, this purple bar, this is our third grade ELA and math. So ELA is reading and math. This is a composite score, again, of all third graders in our district and all third graders in other districts you see on the screen. This is extremely exciting to see. We did better than all the school districts in this area and exceeded the state average by 32%. These third graders are now going into fifth grade, and what this means is that we are recovering well from that learning loss during COVID, and that our teachers' instructional efforts are paying huge dividends. So, just this is, thank you. Yeah, this is this is huge because this is a forecast for our future. So graduation rate, all these other things that we just talked about will go up because we are doing so well with our younger, younger grades. And despite the rhetoric about public schools in the media from some of our state and national politicians, we have an outstanding record and we are delivering a quality public education for our students. academic achievement that we're focusing on is ICAP. ICAP, it refers to both a process that helps students engage in academic and career development activities and a product that is created and maintained for students upon graduation. ICAP stands for Individual Academic Career Plan. So we're focusing on what we're trying to help students figure out what they want to be when they grow up and what they want to do after high school. So we, um, to support this program, we hired a college and career counselor four years ago and we also started a program called Career Connections or CCP and this is our internship program. In this program we offer career exploration and these are all for uh, high school credit. Workforce, they can earn a credit to go out and actually work in a job the last two hours of school. School apprenticeship and work study. A big thank you to those businesses who have partnered with us and supported our students in this program. 
If you are a local business and interested in participating with us in this program, you can click the QR code on the slide and that will take you to an interest form and you fill that form out and we will have somebody from the high school connect with you and uh, get you an intern for this school year, this semester. Next is our fine arts program. Our extracurricular programs play an important role in our schools by providing opportunities for collaboration, teamwork, leadership, perseverance, engagement, and a whole lot of fun. These activities fall within goal area one, RAM, RAM achievement and enrichment opportunities. We have over 7,500 students enrolled in a fine arts course or program in K through 12. The types of courses that we offer are instrumental music, choir, theater arts, speech and debate, visual arts, stagecraft and theater tech, media arts, general music, and elementary music programs. And now I'd like to just highlight a few things that we did, the fine arts program did last year, and these are just a few. We were the only school in the state that had all performance ensembles, that's nine bands, six choirs, in grades seventh through twelfth, received the OSS AA Superior First Division from every adjudicator. That's 65 judges giving every band, every choir, a perfect score. Um, it's, it's amazing. Our, our fine arts program is amazing. And we took all of our bands and all of our choir, not just our top. So that tells you the depth of uh, that we have as far as our students. We had our first state champion in speech and debate in over seven years, and after two years of fundraising, we took everyone, we took the whole fine arts department to Ireland, and you saw that um, slide earlier. The images you see on this slide is our band and choir in Ireland, so marching on the streets of Dublin, and then our choir singing um, the, our national anthem in a 1,000 year old cathedral. It was amazing. So, so amazing. And uh, we uh, assisted the chamber in our Fine Arts Friday this last year, or Fine Arts Friday. We're looking forward to doing that again with the mural competition and um, our performance groups there. And then our high school musical won Best Ensemble, Best Production Team, and Best Orchestra at this year's Discovery Awards, and we're the only school nominated in every category. And the musical that we presented was High School Musical. We had uh, more all-region and all-state band and choir students than any other uh, school in the state. So it's just so proud of our band and our fine arts program for last year. This year, here's a glimpse of what we're looking forward to for this year. The Pride of Owasso will be t attending the Bands of America competition in Orlando. And this fall, our Voice of Owasso will be attending a choir festival on a carnival cruise this spring. I think I might have to be a chaperone on that trip. Our high school saxophone and percussion ensemble were selected as our featured honor groups at the International Band and Orchestra. This is a huge honor. It's very rare that even one group from one high school gets selected, an ensemble group gets selected to perform at this event. We had two. So just our, our, I can't tell you enough and how outstanding our fine arts program is and the dedication and work that goes into creating programs like this. Our sixth grade choir was selected as the Oklahoma NBA State Honor Choir and will have a feature performance at this year's All-State Convention. And in March, we will be presenting the Little Shop of Horrors as our all-department musical. So we invite you to come out and watch the show. And finally, if you want to keep up with all the great things that are happening with fine arts, you can go out to our website and subscribe to our calendar there. And all the events will just get loaded automatically onto your calendar. Athletics. Our athletics programs set us apart from other schools from all the other schools in the state. Being an Owasso athlete teaches you how to set goals, work hard, be a team player, be a leader, how to compete respectively, uh, develop grit, build character, and play with integrity. Additionally, the memories made during training and competition provides a rich environment and school experience that creates well-rounded, 
high achieving students. We have 23 sports. We added girls wrestling last year. We have 82 teams, over 1,400 athletes participating, and we've won a total of 44 state championships over the years. And this uh, uh, August, in a couple of weeks, August 24th, we will have our second annual Battle of the Burbs at TU Stadium. Owasso versus Bixby. So come on out and watch. We've got to get a little payback is what we're hoping for. And, okay, Gulf Area 2. This is RAM team, and our uh, focus here is the recruitment and retention and development of our employees. Owasso Public Schools will launch our before and after care services called OPS SPARK, Supplemental Program and Activities for RAM Kids. SPARK is designed to provide a safe and welcoming solution to support our students and families with trustworthy child care that will spark students to dream, think, create, explore, and play. This program will be offered at all nine elementaries and it will be for students in pre-K through fifth grade and also at our sixth grade center for grades six through eight. This program supports our strategic plan in the area of recruitment and retention for our employees. This little guy right here uh, was showing me how he could roar like a dinosaur when we got this picture. Investing in our district through bond funding for facilities and maintenance allows us to put our general fund dollars towards employees' compensation packages, hiring more teachers, which in turn keep class sizes small. Passing, and I'd like to thank our legislators and give them a round of applause, because our PAT legislators passed a historic $625 million reoccurring funding package for public schools. Let's give them a round of applause. And believe me, it was a lot of weeping and gnashing and me bugging them on a weekly basis. And um, we got it done, they got it across the finish line and they did a great job. This package included 600 uh, teacher raises, maternity leave, safety and security funding, funding for buildings, and then discretionary funds within our funding package and or within our uh, funding formula, rather. And by having those discretionary funds in our funding formula, that allows districts to use those dollars in, to meet their specific needs. For us, we were able to hire 36 new employees, 36 additional employees this year. That's huge. We hired special ed teachers, paras, elementary and secondary teachers, security officers, bus aides, bus drivers, custodians, and when we get to hire more personnel uh, that provides, that's gonna help us provide resources to our students, when we get to hire more teachers, that helps keep our class sizes small. Our retention rate right now at Owasso Public Schools, retention rate is around 92%. So when people come, once we get them here, they want to stay. We have the best compensation package in the area with an average teacher salary of around $57,000. Our average tenure for our teaching staff is 13 years. So when they come, they stay. And the number of teachers with 10 or more years of experience is 370. So we are not only, when we hire teachers, we are hiring quality teachers who are experienced and then they stay with us once we get them here. Again, we're offering maternity leave this year. We also offer a benefits fair for our employees, free wellness screenings. We were able to give raises two years in a row to all of our employees. And uh, we have the SPARK program that I mentioned earlier for before and after care. We have a recognition program for all of our employees. And then we have a great relationship with our teachers association. I'd like to play this video for you now so you can hear directly from teachers why they choose Owasso Public School. Being a teacher at Owasso Public Schools has meant the world to me. I have always looked at Owasso as um, a great district. The collaboration along with the relationships that I've built, built with my peers has been phenomenal. So being a teacher at Owasso Public Schools, on a personal note, it was it's just been a huge victory for my life that I was able to 
get into a school district that I have so much respect and admiration for, um, and to be able to teach where my children went to school and to teach with incredible educators that taught my children. It's not just being able to teach here and be successful. It's not about just what I do and what I bring to my classroom. It's about the support, the fostering of autonomy in our classroom, yet still lots of rigor for standards and everything that's really important also. Being a teacher at Al Rosso Public Schools is really important to me because I got to graduate from Al Rosso Public Schools and I think about the teachers who invested so much in me. I now get the opportunity to watch my own children go through Al Rosso Public Schools and be invested in that same way and I get the opportunity to serve kids in our own community and just invest in them the way that I was grown and invested in and I think that's a huge honor. So I think for me, being a teacher here means family, right? So my boys went here, they were taught by great educators and through being successful as a person and in academics, right? The next part of that for me, being family, is my students become family for the year, right? So they become my kids. So I think of them like that, I talk to them sometimes like I'm their mom. And then the other part is that is my coworkers. We just become a family. Um, year after year, we just build those bonds. So to me, being a also means family. I can't imagine being anywhere else. When I tell people I'm a teacher, I'm proud to say that um, I have spent my time here in Owasso and, that, and this is where my um, career will end. Also, I'll retire from Owasso Public Schools. Owasso is a great place to work. The support that we receive from our administration is amazing. The parent support is great. I, I can't imagine being anywhere else. So we are fortunate that we have such an amazing group of teachers and we and people want to be here. Um, and the, but I will tell you that the teacher shortage is real. We were just talking about that this morning. We have usually had all of our positions filled by this time of year. We actually have about four certified positions that are still open. Um, we're hoping to get two of those filled, maybe by tomorrow or the next day. Uh, but we um, are in a position that we've never seen before um, that I'm aware of as far as teacher shortage. So to help with the teacher shortage, we need to continue to increase funding for our schools and salaries for our teachers to stay competitive with the surrounding states. We also need to support teachers by simply saying thank you. Thank you for the service that you are providing to our next generation. And finally, we need to stop the negative political rhetoric about teachers and public education and lift the profession in our actions and our words. Thank you. Um, next is goal area three, our RAM community and culture. And uh, with this comes stakeholder satisfaction as well as providing a safe and nurturing environment. This year, we've invested over $300,000 in hiring five school security officers to supplement and complement our current three SRO officers, so school resource officers. We've had SROs for over 20 years in our district. Our SROs are Owasso police officers, and with uh, the way the environment is now with security and safety, it has become our number one priority to keep everyone as safe as possible at school. So we have invested in hiring five armed security officers to complement our SROs. These security officers are CLEAT certified and all have a, a former law enforcement training. They will provide a proactive presence and positive presence in all 15 of our school sites. We also, as far as, as long, along those lines with security and safety, we have cameras inside and out of all of our buildings on our parking in our parking lots. We also have um, access control. You have to be buzzed in and out. You can't just walk into our school buildings. We partner with local law enforcement and do active shooter training so that if there is a situation where we have an intruder, our law enforcement already knows or are familiar with our school sites. And this is huge, what I'm about to tell you with our, our health services professionals, because a lot of school districts only have one nurse or zero nurses to support their school district. You guys, we have eight RNs and seven health aides 
We have 15 health professionals. That allows us to have a health services professional at every single one of our school sites. The reason that we focus on health and safety, security, is so that we can maintain an environment to keep our kids safe, keep them healthy, so that they can stay in school and we have an environment where they can just focus on learning. So it's just so grateful for that support. And then finally, goal area four is RAM resources, and this is about improving and maintaining our district infrastructure. With technology, we have over 14 team members supporting Google Classroom, our learning management system across the district, 32 buildings in our district. You can see all the devices that our technology team supports. We have um, 245 network switches. We have 38 different service software and service applications. Just to maintain technology and keep as up to date as we possibly can, we have an annual budget of $1.4 million is what, re is what that requires. Bond funds, this community passing bond funds allows us to do this. So, so thank you. I say thank you to you and the community for helping us pass those bond, uh, bond issues. And then we also have, on the other side, instructional technology. We have a teaching and learning coordinator that is dedicated to providing professional development for our teachers so that they can use this technology in the classroom, uh, best practices for instruction and those instructional strategies. We have 18 instructional tech site leaders. They, these are teachers who have the skills very highly skilled with technology, and they support their peers in the classroom with instructional technology. We have 187 different types of instructional apps that our teachers utilize and our students utilize. We have 10 coding and computer science courses, and then we're offering eSports this year, and we're gonna actually have competitions and teams, and it's gonna be a blast. And then within district services, um, we have construction, so bond issue, I talked about that. We passed an $84 million bond issue two years ago in the spring of 2022, and this allows us to provide new construction. We have a wellness center, a second floor remodel that is almost done. We are getting ready to break ground on track, and we are starting the plans with our Hudson safe structure. Our eighth grade safe structure will come online soon. And then we have our transportation renovation that we will be working on in the next few years. We are also beginning the process of long-range master planning, facility planning. We're not just gonna look out for the next bond issue, but five years, 10 years, 15 years, 20 years down the road, we've hired a demographer to come in and take a look at our enrollment, enrollment trends, so that we can plan in the future and do this master planning. The thing that the facility that we are also working going to be focused on within this five-year strategic plan is pre-K. We've got to decide for full day pre-K, do we want that in our individual elementaries or do we build one giant all things pre-K center? So we will be uh, working on that, planning that this year. I'm going to let Mark Bolton give you an update. He's on the video uh, about construction around the district. My name is Mark Nolton, I'm the Director of Construction, and I'm going to walk you through some of the bond projects we have ongoing right now. First up is our West Campus roof. We replaced the metal roof on the gym, kitchen, cafeteria, and the main core going to the back of the building. This alleviated 60 known leaks that we had in this structure. We put a brand new metal roof on this, and it's the same brown that matches the old. We have some beautiful pictures of it. All of that is bond money. Next up is eighth grade roof. So far we've replaced two of the building portions with a, a renovated roof. We kept the existing built up roof, which is the best roofing system out there. And by doing a restoration versus a full replacement, we were able to do it for 40% of the cost, which is amazing in today's market. So next on the agenda is our wellness center. We're presently renovating the second floor. Our training facilities needed to be expanded because our programs have increased. There's about a thousand students that run through there every day. 
So the second floor has been gutted and new offices, new training, and more importantly, new treatment facilities are in, implemented into that space. We have two projects that are coming back up. One of them is going to be the track renovations, and the other is going to be a safe structure papatorium at Hotson. So that's a list of our current bond projects. We'll give you further updates as construction continues. So he does a great job um, keeping track and keeping up with all that construction. So we talked about bond dollars with new builds, construction, and um, maintenance, and new, new roofs and that sort of thing. I'm going to now switch over to operations and transportation. We spend, as far as um, that bond dollars, we spend about $10 million annually just for maintenance for operations and textbooks and roofs and HVACs, paint, carpet, parking lots. This is an example. This just gives you an example of the size and scope of our maintenance and our facilities and transportation. So we have transport 6,000 students a day. We travel, our buses travel around 500 miles a day. We use 20,000 gallons of fuel every month. Our transportation team goes on, in addition to our regular routes, 3,000 activity trips a year. Buses cost, just a regular school bus cost $116,000 up to $165,000 for our activity buses. And then when we travel to an away football game, and we don't go very far, when I say away, I mean Union or Bixby, and we take our van, it takes 27 vehicles to travel to those away football games. So our transportation team does an amazing job every time we go somewhere. And then buildings, we have 32 buildings, uh, 1.8 million total square feet. We have 676 rooftop units, HVAC units that we are constantly keeping up with and maintaining. We have uh, 67 acres of parking lots and 107 acres of mowing. And so when it's when it's raining like this and it's warm, that grass is really growing. So I think about our operations team and all the mowing. I'm gonna let Brad Yokely in this video tell you, show you what we do over the summer months to prepare our school sites for the school year. Hello, I'm Brad Yokely, Director of Operations for Owasso Public Schools. Today I wanted to walk you through a few things that we go through in the summer months to get ready for the upcoming school year. One of our largest uh, areas that we have to focus on are our painting of the rooms. Each year we try to repaint two entire schools throughout the entire facility. With that, then we do basically about eight to 10 classrooms in every site. Uh, if you think about that, we've got 15 different locations that we'll go through. So it's an enormous amount of painting. Uh, that's one big thing we do. The second thing we do is uh, we try to refinish all the floors. Uh, some of that is a simple scrub and buff, but as well, we try to do a certain number of floors every year where we strip the floors. This is a uh, very consuming process. Uh, it requires probably anywhere from, if it's a cafeteria, it may take us as long as two weeks, uh, to a classroom, it may take us three to four days to strip the uh, wax off the floor. Uh, so next we jump into some of our major projects or renovation projects that also requires a lot of coordination. One of our big projects would be our, we're trying to get into a life cycle of our carpets. So in order to do that, we have to pull up all the carpet, which is a very lengthy process. They actually have to pull the uh, carpet squares that are adhered to the floor. They then have to go through and remove the uh, adhesive and then come back and crack fill and seal the floor and then the final stage of course apply adhesive and put the carpets back down and then put the base back on the wall so and with that being said there's no way that all this work could be done uh, without the great staff that we have in the operations team uh, we have a team of about 75 individuals that go through and do a majority of this work throughout the summer uh, there's numerous other things that we probably did not discuss that we take for granted daily. Uh, we will have changed over close to 8,000 bulbs this summer as well. And again, those are done throughout with 
normal staff day in, day out as they go into buildings and look for opportunities. So I just wanted to give you a little glimpse of kind of the behind the scenes that happens to keep schools running. We could not have school without transportation, operations, maintenance, and technology. And they do such a good job of it that it's like, I hate to, I mean, they're sitting right there, so I hate to say this, but it's almost like you don't even notice because it is, they do such a good job. It's like it's just automatic. So I really, really appreciate their support and service to the district. Next, we've talked about love, challenge, and prepare. Our goal at Owasso Public Schools is to love, challenge, and prepare all kids to become productive citizens. Mrs. Barger embodies this effort every single day. Stephanie Barger is our 2023 Teacher of the Year. She is a special education teacher and is one of the most dedicated teachers I've ever had the pleasure to observe. She provides encouragement, support, and the right amount of tough love to allow her students to flourish. It is absolutely an amazing sight to behold. She, along with a number of other teachers, take over 200 unified partners to events throughout the school year and culminates with the entire group going to Special Olympics each spring at OSU, Stillwater. The unified program pairs students who are mentors with our special education students. I truly believe this is one of the most impactful programs we have in our district. Let's watch the video so you can see for yourself why Mrs. Barber is so special. Hi, I'm Stephanie Barger. I am a special education teacher for Owasso Public Schools at Owasso High School. I have been in Owasso High School for 17 years and in the district for 19 years. They absolutely love when we get to go out in the community and do anything. We do a Friendsgiving where they plan the meal and we go shopping. They get to go and they do self-checkout and they have their own money and they absolutely love those opportunities. They love planning events. They get to be involved in the transition fair and real world things that are happening in our building. I try to create a positive environment that is student focused. I really am proud of how our department has grown in the last three years. We are a more cohesive department who really works together to make sure that our kids, our students are challenged and become more independent learners. I don't think there is just one thing that can describe an outstanding teacher. I think the best teachers make sure that their students come first and that they have the right balance of compassion and understanding that they can put their their selves in their students' place. When they do that, there is just that natural relationship that forms with students and everything else melts away. That is your classroom management. The students want to succeed for you. Being a teacher at Owasso Public Schools was like coming home. I am a third generation graduate. My kids graduated from here and hopefully my new grandson will also graduate from here. I love this community and I love being at my high school. It has really grown since 1991 and I love that I'm a part of that and that my kids contribute to the great things that are going on in Owasso High School. My name is Stephanie Barger and I am an Owasso Ray. We are so fortunate to have Mrs. Barger with you with us today. Mrs. Barger, please stand up and be recognized. <laughs> this video speaks volumes. It demonstrates not only why Mrs. Barger is such an amazing teacher, but also highlights one of the reasons why strong public schools are so necessary for the success of our state and our nation. Public schools educate all students. Oklahoma Public Schools educate educate 92% of our K through 12 students. This is about 700,000 students statewide. 
Public schools are the foundation of our economy, our workforce, our society, our democracy, and our freedom. It is my distinct honor and privilege to be a part of this noble and worthy profession. Oklahoma Teacher of the Year, Rebecca Mosda, who is also a teacher at Union High School, who also won National Teacher of the Year, and her address to the nation emphasized the importance of embracing all students and why she loves being a teacher. She said, I teach because it gives me life to offer the American dream to the next generation. I will close by saying the state of education is strong and thriving in Owasso, and we are proud to provide the opportunity for all students to seek the American dream. Thank you for supporting Owasso Public Schools, and go Rams!